So between that last clip and now, it's been a couple of days. Just got sidetracked with stuff in the house and weekend family stuff and uh, little Eden's first day at school. So it's been an exciting couple of days, but now I'm gonna have a chance at getting the rest of the ceiling finished. So I, what I've done is uh, got to the point where we've got all the insulation in, foil tape done, uh, but what I want to do next is put in the wiring which I forgot to put in. What I've been using is this flexible conduit which is actually, must be about 20 mil, which is way more than we need. And most of the factory fitted stuff in the van already is about half of this in width so I don't really want to now I'm gonna to have to chase in a little bit of the insulation to fit it in I don't really want to take that much out and that's just some tiny mini bore micro bore 10 mil pipe again that's perfect and it's only really just to keep the wires freely moving so I can thread them through and of course you want to keep insulation and wires away from each other if you can because uh, I think the plastic coating you can go quite brittle uh, with some insulation so I'm gonna do that, work out exactly where I need the lights in, and then we'll cut ourselves a little slot, put that in. Still get my head around the whole 12 volt system. Um, I can just about cope with house electrics and how that works and I'm just kind of getting my head around the whole parallel and serious thing because it's been a while since doing physics at school. Um, but we want to run these three ceiling lights in parallel. They'll be coming via the wall switch, the master switch, and then going off in parallel because of course if they were in series and we turned the first one off on the ceiling uh, button, it would turn them all off. So that's why we're running it that way and then uh, the negatives will come back and head back to the, um, the fuse board and everything up, up at the top there. So that's all of that done that we can now get on and panel the ceiling far more at home with sawdust than I am with Watson amps. So we can get on and do that uh, and then of course we can still thread everything through uh, the conduit afterwards. So I'm just having a look at this over cab area and uh, because the panelling, I need to kind of determine how far this ceiling carries on through. And I was trying to take out this plastic tray because it's just a little bit of a raised profile there that it makes the cupboard quite a lot more of a letterbox um, than it needs to be. However, uh, it's riveted right at the far end. I don't think I can get to that with any tools. I don't really want to take the headlining out of the cab. So the only real hump which is getting in the way is just this front bit. So I'm actually thinking that we get rid of this section, leave the, the actual plastic tray in there, which is absolutely fine and clean, and that's the inside of the cupboard anyway. And probably get a jigsaw in there. Much better taking that off and it's kind of opened this up by a good 50 mil or so. Still got all the fixing points to go in there so we can still maintain all of that kind of vibration control and damp uh, and kind of sound deadening that's already in there. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is just measure how far the panelling is going to go through because uh, it may as well cap off inside there. We'll put some insulation in there to make sure that we don't forget any of the uh, areas of the van, especially up here. So that's why I want to kind of really get the insulation everywhere we can and make the most of this little space up here. So the first one's probably the trickiest. After that it's going to be a bit of a production line. First one's got to have the holes in for all the fixings, but it's also got to allow, well it's also got to be perfectly central and perfectly parallel with the walls because everything's going to be built off that. So I've cut it to length already and I've made sure I've picked a nice straight one to start us off.
Okay, so that's the last of the straightforward strips on the roof. It's 15 in total. And now we've got to the point where we need to start kind of either cutting around the side ribs or sloping down or angling down. So I'm gonna look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. Uh, but a little bit on the cladding itself. A lot of people use uh, tongue and groove type panelling on their ceilings. Uh, there's a few other options. You could do plywood and just kind of cover the joints with little strips. You could carpet the ceiling or put some sort of vinyl uh, on your plywood before you fix it up. Uh, and there are, of course, other uh, sort of fabric options. So we've gone with this just standard pine tongue and groove. But you'll notice that I've managed to source it in full length uh, pieces. So they're 4.2 meter lengths and I'm trimming off uh, just 100 mil off each. And that means we've got no joins along the whole length of the van and I think that looks far nicer. Makes the van feel kind of longer as well I think. Just kind of gives that look. You haven't got any broken lines across the ceiling. They come in just under a pound a meter and I guess we've probably used uh, 80 or 90 meters uh, on the roof. If we were going to use plywood then we could get away with the thinner plywood we'd still need three sheets and a little bit uh, so it would work out slightly less but you wouldn't have the feature of um, a panelled ceiling if that's what you want so after a little bit of playing around this is what I've come up with uh, I didn't really want to do the whole kind of curving down and carrying on down the wall and the wall we are doing in a different kind of method different panelling so we've got two strips going along just got some off cuts here this one is actually on the rib there's a plywood strip first, that one we fix tight in against the rib. This one, we'll get a small fixing in top and bottom, but that's the one that's going to cut the angle to bring it down. And I think that should work, providing that we're symmetrical and that we've finished this piece here at the same distance so it can come down as well. But I think this is really the only way to get a nice transition between the kind of long panelling and our wall cladding. Now some of you may be concerned that I've gone a bit nuts and panelled straight over our roof lights. Uh, I have, but that was uh, an educated decision. Rather than holding up stuff, measuring, trimming, and hoping that we could get it in that way, I've actually decided to panel over them completely, and then I'm gonna use a router and a flush trim bit, and hopefully that'll ride on the wooden box that we've got behind that frame, and leave us with a flush hole. Uh, that's all theory, so we'll have to have a look and see how that works out. I'm going to drill through, stick a flush trim, route a bit through and hopefully zip these out. I'm going to charge up the GoPro, sheet off just about everything I can, because I think we're going to get some sawdust. Well, apart from the sheer amount of sawdust everywhere, that could not have gone much better. Uh, it's actually my birthday, so I should probably have the evening off. But what I will do is I'm just gonna put these frames back up, uh, just because I kind of want to see what they look like, and also make sure that we have 
allowed our uh, spacing for our cladding and that holds it all up tight and I guess we should probably have a tidy up. Well, one of the two is all finished, and of course you've still got to paint this, but uh, it's fitting out nice and snug, and I've just kind of temporarily fixed it up there. And this has actually still got some clips to go in it, which will hold it up tighter uh, to the finished surface. So I think I'll cut the video there. You've seen how I've insulated the roof, the vapour barrier, um, and kind of finishing out these openings. Um, I will use the same method for those angles. I've put these strips of ply on now. I've actually left a slight gap so that they are completely against the rib, which means our angles are identical both sides. And I'll kind of just show you how that works out when it comes, comes to the wall. What I'd really like to do is run all of our wiring, our cables through before I do any of these angled bits, because uh, it's going to get tricky otherwise. So anyway, that's a little insight into how I've insulated the roof. You will see that there's endless ways people do it. Some right, some very, very wrong. Uh, this may be somewhere in between. Next video, we're gonna be looking at the wall insulation and cladding that, or possibly even some of the cabling at the same time. We're slowly picking up speed, and I really need to get this wrapped up by the end of September, this first phase, uh, because I really need to focus my attention on all the stairs and the joinery in the house and get that finished. Lots going on as always. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Check out other videos, there's lots going on. But remember, if you can, do it yourself, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.